Yeah, well, listen, uh, our time is starting to get away from us a little bit. And uh, I don't know if any, you, any of you guys audible people, audible books, or you listen to your Bible. You know how there's a speed on it, <laughs> right? <laughs> but when you turn the speed up, you know, usually I stick around 1.25, but if I really got to move through something, I move it up to 1.52. But every, the faster I put my audible books, the, the more I have to pay attention, right? So what I'm telling you is we're going to turn up the speed a little bit here, and that means you've got to tune in a little bit better. Amen? Let's do it. Let, we're excited for the world. Well, again, proud of our, our, our graduates. Uh, you know, graduation is a wonderful thing. It's a culmination of persistence, hard work, excellence, right? For me, it was survival, study hall, and very generous teachers. And, uh, but we've all had our way of getting, getting through it. But you know, you know what I love about graduation Sunday and these things is, and we've all kind of been in these places, it's, it, it's kind of the end of something, but whenever something comes to an end, it always means there's a beginning to something new, amen? amen. And, and we all have the opportunity through our life to have fresh new starts to things. Maybe, uh, maybe you, you are graduating and you're going to be starting a new job or you've gone to a, a new job. It's a day of new beginnings. May, maybe it's a, it's a new school. Maybe it's a new chapter, a new project you've been given. Maybe it was when you first came to know the Lord as your Lord and Savior, right? It, the Lord is all about new beginnings. And so today what I want to do is I want to talk to you and speak to you a message you can put up there uh, simply called Brave. And we kind of wrote this message at, in, in lieu of graduation Sunday, but I, I want to tell you that I believe with all my heart that this message is for all of our, our church, just like last Sunday we, we spoke to our fathers, but it was for all of us, because I believe the Lord is calling us to all graduate spiritual levels. You with me? There's always a higher level in our spiritual walk that God's calling us to, to do. And the way I've looked at it, I've had many new beginnings in my life, new jobs, new positions, new, new titles, new things. To, it, it, it takes one key word to, whenever you're beginning this, and, and the key word is brave. It, it, it takes bravery. It, it takes everything in you to, to be brave. And so I'm going to give you just a, a little bit of a story uh, about bravery. And uh, we're going to go way back to kind of lay the foundations uh, of this message. 500 years ago, uh, a parish priest in Wittenberg, Germany, he did something brave. The, the Catholic Church was selling indulgences to help build St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. But Martin Luther knew that salvation was by faith alone. On October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther posted his 95 thesis on the door of the castle church, right there on these doors. And 500 years later, there are more than 900 million people who call themselves Protestants. But it all starts with brave. The Lord's calling us to a new realm of brave. I, I want you to understand this key term. You're going to hear this throughout the, the message this morning. I want it to sink into your heart. It's this thought, your brave is someone else's breakthrough. You with me? Your brave is someone else's breakthrough. Let's continue in the story. In 1934, an African-American Baptist pastor named Michael King traveled to Germany where he heard about the bravery of this parish priest. Martin Luther, what, what, Martin Luther was so impacted that he did something so dramatic that he changed his name from Michael King to Martin Luther King. Years after that, he had a son. He named his son Martin Luther King Jr. Not unlike his namesake, Dr. Martin Luther King was brave. In November of 1954, he preached a sermon. In that sermon, these were the words that he spoke. The Christian is called upon not to be like a thermometer, conforming to the temperature of society, but it's called to be the thermostat, serving to transform the temperature of his society. You see, cowardice is a thermometer, but brave is the thermostat. We have to make a decision in our culture. Are we going to simply tell what the condition of our culture is, or are we going to be brave and we're going to change our culture, our society? Are we, are we, are we going to be able to adapt to that? I love this because this story goes on. In December 1st, 1955, just a few weeks after King preached that sermon, five blocks away from the pulpit where he preached today, transformed nonconformist named Rosa Parks, boarded a Cleveland Ave bus there in Birmingham, Alabama. 
When the white section filled up, the bus driver told her to give up her seat, and Rosa Parks politely refused. Later in life, she said, people are always saying that I didn't give up my seat because I was tired, but it isn't true. The only tired I was was tired of giving in. Rosa Parks' brave, Rosa Parks' brave led to a court battle, which led to a citywide boycott, which led to a Supreme Court ruling that segregation is unconstitutional. Now let's go back and chase the domino just a little bit further. A few years after posting his 95 thesis on the door of the castle church there, Luther was put on trial. In 1521, he was told to recant his faith, but he refused. And he had to say something that was brave. This is his words. My conscience is taken captive by God's word. I cannot and I will not recant anything, for to act against our conscience is neither safe for us nor open to us. On this I take my stand. I can do no other. Brave is, is the conscience that takes taken captive by the, the word of God, that, that it were changed by the operations of God. Let me tell you a little bit like this. Brave is Noah building an ark. Brave is Abraham putting Isaac on an altar. Brave is Moses saying to Pharaoh, let my people go. Brave is Joshua commanding the sun to stand still. Brave is Benaiah chasing a lion into a pit on a, on a snowy day. Brave is, is David charging Goliath with a slingshot. Brave is Nathan rebuking David for adultery. Brave is Elijah challenging the 450 prophets of Baal. Ba brave is Esther entering the king's court uninvited. Brave is Daniel in the lion's den. I want to tell you, the Bible is a book of brave. Amen. Jesus didn't die to keep us safe. He, he died to make us dangerous. And the way I look at it, there's really only two ways we can live our life. We have two choices. You, you can be brave or you can be boring. And boring isn't just boring, boring is wrong. Someone once said this, that boredom is at the root of all evil. That boredom stirs up the worst in us. Let me tell you what brave is. Brave is 125 people leaving the comfort of their home church nine years ago to go plant a church in this little town called Washington Township. Brave is one church planning five different locations. Brave is planning a campus in Union to reach a Spanish community. Brave is buying an 88,000 square foot community center. Brave is giving $2 million to the lost of the world. Let me tell you something. If you're following the footsteps of Jesus, you will be anything but bored. Following Jesus is brave because brave is what Jesus did. Brave is offending the Pharisees. Brave is, t is touching the lepers. Brave is befriending sinners. Brave is throwing the money changers out of the temple. Brave is healing on the Sabbath. Brave is praying for those who persecute you. And brave is forgiving those who want to crucify you. Jesus is brave and brave is Jesus. It's the epitome of bravery was Jesus carrying that cross down the Via Della Rosa for someone else's sin. Bravery begins at the foot of the cross. And just like our bravery is somebody else's breakthrough, Jesus' bravery was our breakthrough. His brave moment on that cross is the reason you and I get to be here today. It's the breakthrough that every one of us needed because on our own we, we couldn't do it. And this morning what I want to do is share probably one of the most dynamic stories in the scripture that talks about bravery. I invite you now to turn your Bible to Daniel chapter 3. It's in the Old Testament, and it's a story about these three young Jewish boys. As a matter of fact, this morning we sang a song that kind of talked about them, and I'll get into that in, in just a minute. And We talked about these three young boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And let me just fill you in before we get into the story a little bit. They, they were there in captivity in Babylon. Remember, all of Israel had been taken captive to, to Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar thought so highly of himself and ruled so much of the empire and, and the known world at that time, he built a 90-foot statue of himself. I mean, just begin to think of a nine-story building and think of a statue that big. And, and, he, and he made a, a very simple decision. He said, bring everybody all together and have them bow down to this statue. Now, let me just go off on a little tangent here for just a minute. 
You know, last week we looked at this incredible story of Esther, right? And, and, and we looked at this incredible story of this man named Mordecai. Remember I told you that the enemy has nothing new up his tricks? It's the same old thing over and over, recycled, recycled. And this is what his plan has always been. What was the story uh, with, uh, last week that we looked at with Mordecai? Hey, there's this man named Haman. He thinks he's great. And he says what? Bow down. Mordecai says no. We taught you the rest of the story. If you missed it, you can go on our YouTube channel and watch the, the message. Well, it's the same story here. here. Here's Nebuchadnezzar. What do he say? Bow down. Why bow down? Do you know what worship means? It means to go prostrate or to kneel or lay down before. This is the reason why. Because the enemy, he has a plan. And his plan is to help you or make you worship anything other than God. Now, I, I've said this many times before, but you and I, we need to understand something. Created in our DNA, created in who we are, we are created to worship. So the question is, will we, will we or will we not worship? The real question is, what will we worship? And throughout the history and the analogs of time, the real question is, what will we bow down to? And here is just another story of another person and the enemy using another person to get people to bow down or to worship something other than God. You with me? So what are we going to worship? Let's dive into this story. It's one of the greatest stories in, in the, the Bible. I'm going to read quite a bit to you. You'll stick right with me. Daniel chapter 3, starting in verse 16, we'll read through 28. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Now listen to verse 18. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. His attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. He commanded some of the strongest soldiers in the army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes and trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, were there not three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He looked, said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servant of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire and the satraps and the prefects and the governors and the royal advisors crowded around them. They saw the fire had not harmed their body, nor was a hair on their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel to rescue his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command, and they were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, I pray that a spirit of bravery would fall in this room. Lord, I pray that a new urgency for taking a stand for what you've called us to do would fall all across this room. Lord, empower us and strengthen us to give us all that we need, Lord. Let your word be a lamp unto our feet. Guide us today, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm not going to be long today, but I am going to give you four points that I want you to write down. Because the real question is, is what do we do with this? How, how do we actually be brave? How do we walk in bravery? What, what was it that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had in their spirit that enabled them for this miraculous miracle? Well, the first one is this. Bravery requires that you are unwilling to offend God. You see, you're going to have a choice every single day. Who are you willing to offend? 
Let's look at the life of, of Jesus. It's surrounded by all these religious people and, and these Pharisees and these people who, who thought highly of themselves. But the, the, the Pharisees continually battled who they were willing to offend and those people around them. Listen to what John says about this. John 12, 42 and 43, and, and, and the words of our Lord, it says, Yet at the same time, many even among the leaders, which would have been those, those Pharisees, they believed in him. They believed in Jesus. Many around this big religious group, they believed that Jesus was who he said he was, that he was the son of the living God. And they believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for their for fear they would be put out of the synagogue. Now, verse 43, this is an incredible line. For they loved human praise more than praise from God. The real question is, who are you willing to offend? Let, let me put this up on, on the screen for you. If you fear man, you're probably going to offend God. But if you fear God, you're probably going to offend man. And I said that kind of lightly. I'll, I'll probably say it like this. If you fear man, you're going to offend God. And if you fear God, you're going to offend man. It, it, it's going to happen. And I love the story with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They, it's not that they, they wanted to offend the king. It wasn't that they, they were out to get the king. They didn't ask for the furnace. They didn't ask for the statue. But a time came in their life, who are we willing to offend? Are we going to offend God or are we going to offend King Nebuchadnezzar? And when it came down to the heart of the matter, it was a decision that was easy for them. We will not offend God. And, and I love this passage. Our God, he will come and he will deliver us from this fiery furnace. But if he doesn't, this is my translation, it doesn't matter anyway. Because we are unwilling to offend our Lord. They had a decision to make. At the heart of bravery is who are you willing to offend? I, I just want to help you out with this. Our society is not getting easier, it's getting harder. Times are not getting easier, they're getting more difficult, and, and it's going to be this really balanced point in our life because our society tells us, be careful, don't offend anyone. But in the midst of us trying not to offend anyone, we've got to be very careful that we don't offend God. And when it comes to a decision, if we have to offend, we will offend men and not God. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, bravery requires that you move in faith and not fear. Listen, when you walk in a sense of awe, respect, reverence for God, and, and you, allow, you allow God to have the veto, veto power in your life, God, you get to call the shots. You're in charge uh, uh, of my life. You ultimately means you're living for him alone. My life is, is yours. I surrender it all to you. The, when, when this is the case, you have nothing to fear. Listen to, listen to what 1 John 4, 18 says. It says, perfect love casts out fear. And I love what John 15 says. It says that when we abide in him, then he also will abide in us. How do we live in, in, in faith and not fear? You need to understand something. Fear and faith, they're at the opposite end of the spectrum. They don't coexist. You're either going to live with fear and let it rule and reign over your life, or you're going to live in faith and you're going to say, God, I'm going to abide in you and I'm going to live in you and I'm going to have my being and my spirit in you, and when I am in encounter with the living, powerful presence of God, it says this, that it casts out fear. Are you getting the language of this? And it means that fear that's inside of you, when this perfect love comes into your life, he takes it and he casts it out of the house. It doesn't belong here anymore. And we begin to live in supernatural faith and we begin to get rid of the fear that we have. We can become brave because that bravery and that love that he has for us, it breaks fear. And we can walk fearlessly. The, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Hey, and so we walk with the Lord. The third thing is this. Bravery requires that you live without offense. I want you to just stick with me here for just a minute. I, I think I like it like this, living unoffended. And I, I'm not positive that's a word, but I like it. 
It means I'm not going to carry a grudge, and I'm not going to I'm not going to let criticism get the best of me. If, if you if you miss everything today, don't miss this. If you live off of compliments, you're going to probably die by criticism. <laughs> if you live off of compliments, you're going to die off of criticism. This is how John Bevere describes it. Offense is going to happen. It's part of life, but John Bevere calls it the bait of Satan. And the moment we let offense get into our heart, all of a sudden the enemy is winning. He said that, she said that, he did that, she did that. And all of a sudden this offense comes on us. I want to tell you, living brave, this is what it means. I'm not going to let the seed of bitterness get into my spirit. Living without, with, living without offense means that I'm going to start to let some things go. I'm talking to you this morning. Because there's some people in this room, it's time to let some things go. And God is calling you to bravery, and God is calling you to a new day, and God is calling you to a new start, and God is calling you to a new chapter. But the problem is you can't start a new chapter because you keep dwelling in the old chapter. And there's some things that were said over your life when you were young by moms and dads and teachers. There's some things that have been said about you by your coworkers and your bosses and those that you work with. And there's been some people in your communities and your towns and they've said things about you and they're holding you back and you begin to carry a fence with everything you do. And if you're going to live brave, you've got to let it go. Because who are we really living for? And if you live off compliments, you're going to die of criticism. And if you allow that criticism to continually come in, you're going to die from it. And God is saying it's a new day, it's a new hour, the story that we said last week of Esther, for such a time as this. This is the moment God has created us for. No other time in the histories, in the annals, in the annals of time, has God decided to put you and I here and we can ruin every day of our life if we live with offense. It's the bait of Satan. And I've seen churches split over it. And I've seen best friends be divided, and I've seen families split from the core over offense. Steve is many. Listen to what Ephesians 4 says about this. Steve is many. This is this, Paul's word to the church. Be completely humble and gentle. Can be you patient, just tap on your mic? bearing with one another in what? Love. Make every effort to keep it, the thanks. unity of the spirit through the bond of what? Peace. Hey, I want to tell you something. It's our job to walk in peace and love. Amen? Amen. And, and I want you to catch something uh, about this church. We're all a little different. You with me? We're all a little different. That means everybody in this room thinks and feels a little bit different about different things. And, and because of that, we might get offended by what somebody else thinks or feels. But Paul says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. What brings us together is greater than what can separate us. And we are here for one purpose and one mission only. It's the kingdom of Jesus Christ. It's what holds us together. You with me? It, it, it's, it's, the, it's the part of everything that matters. And Paul's saying that living in unity and peace is the greater goal than having your own way. We don't need a church where everybody wants to have their own way. We want to have God's way. This is the brave way to live your life. You, you would think that bravery means stick out your chest and go get your way and push through, but the Spirit teaches us something different than that. That you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And you love your neighbor greater than you love yourself. And that's brave. You know, we spend so much energy that I'm offended by you, and you're offended by me, and I'm offended by them, and they're offended by you. And we're in this whirlwind circle uh, of this thing. And I just want to tell you, we've got to let it go. Those offenses were nailed to the cross. They've been taken care of. Let the Lord fight your battles. Amen? Amen. Number four. This is, at the, this is at the heart of this story. Bravery requires that you live unashamed. I mean, this is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They stood brave, and they let God do his thing. 
No matter what would come, you know, they, these thoughts of, hey, what will others think? What will happen to me? You know, man, just this one time, I'll just compromise just this one. Can you, can you imagine the spiritual battle that was going on with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Listen, I mean, I could just, I could just bow down. And when I'm bowing down, I can just pray my own prayer. You with me? I mean, we, just a little bit of compromise. J just a little bit of fitting in. Just a little bit of sliding my way into the culture here. And, and, and everything will be, be okay. But they never, they never seem fit to say, hey, it's my job to protect God or defend God. I think he can do that himself. You know, I love the way Billy Graham says it. He, says it like, he said it like this. It is the Holy Spirit's job to convict. It's God's job to judge, and it's my job to love. You know, I, I think so often we try to do the Holy Spirit's work for him, and we're not very good at it. And we get on our computers, and we try to do God's job and post this and do this and do this. This is what I want to tell you. God is out there doing his job. And the Holy Spirit is out there doing his job. Can we let him do it? And, and, and there's some situations that you're walking through right now that are difficult and trying. And I just want to tell you that God is working in the midst of that. And you might not see the fruit of it yet, but I promise you, he's working. It's what he does. And so let God do his, his, his job. And let the Holy Spirit do, do his job. And you, you love like Jesus Christ loves. That's what bravery is. Bravery is loving the sinner. Bravery is going against that religious spirit that seems to find its way. You know, have you ever heard this, this little statement, let your conscience be your guide? I have a few problems with that. Depends what your conscience is listening to. So this is what I say. As believers, let's let our conscience be our guide. But let's let the Bible and the Holy Spirit lead our conscience. That's what Martin Luther said. He said, my conscience cannot let me revoke what I say. The Holy Spirit has captivated my heart. Why would I recant what I've stated? Let's let the Holy Spirit grab a hold of our convictions and our conscience, and let's begin to do the right thing. I just want to help you out with something. The right thing is only going to get harder and harder and harder. You with me? To walk out the Bible and to walk out Christianity like the Bible prescribes it to be walked out, it's not going to get easier. It's going to get harder. But this is what the Lord is calling you and I to be. Brave. 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 And when there has been a brave church, and any time... And in any history that stands up for what is right, revival comes. Revival cannot flow and function in half-hearted, go-with-the-flow, cultural Christianity. You with me? It comes with biblical foundations of knowing what the Bible says and following through, no matter what comes and no matter what despite it. Making a stand for what's right. Listen to what Romans says. It's a powerful verse. Romans 1.16, it says this. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto some salvation. Why would we be ashamed of the good news? Why would we be ashamed that Jesus Christ came? He was who he says he was, the son of the living God. He died on the cross to forgive mankind of their sin and he rose from the death so that mankind could have eternity in heaven. Why would we shy away from such a message? Why? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. There's no other salvation except for what's found in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen? It's the gospel that he came to forgive you. Well, Repent of your sins and turn towards Jesus. Let's take our stand. It's time to proclaim, I make no apologies for the gospel. It's time for us to stop apologizing for what Jesus said. You with me? It's changed my life, and I'm going to live unashamed. 
Let's live, let, let, let's live so brave, willing to unoffend God. At the, at the core of our life, the last thing we would ever want to do is offend God. But let's choose to move in faith and not fear. Let, let's live unoffended and let's live unashamed. Let's live brave. And you know, here, here, here's the, 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 the story in a nutshell, right? Your bravery is somebody else's breakthrough. And there's somebody's breakthrough that God has been working up by his Holy Spirit. And he's working in somebody else, but it's going to take your brave to see that outcome. And how do I know that's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Nebuchadnezzar, he left to, left to his feet and he said, amazement, isn't there a fourth man in that fire? And he calls them out and he says, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Praise be to him. You see, these men's brave were Nebuchadnezzar's breakthrough. And God is ready to have some breakthrough in our culture, in our society, in the generation that he's called us to live like never before, but it's going to take a brave, unashamed church to live it out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they could have bowed down, done a little prayer, they could have rationalized this thing a million different ways and a million different houses, but they stood up for what is right. And they knew that their life was in God's hands. Our God will save us, but even if he doesn't, my life is his. Amen? I really do think God's going to come through in this area. I really do think he's going to deliver me, but you need to know no matter what, I'm his anyway. And if it does, if the outcome isn't the way I want it to be, it's the way he wants it to be. He, he, he set our plan. He set it up in our life. And if they would have forfeited their testimony, they would have forfeited a miracle. Can I think about it so often? How many miracles do we forfeit? Because we're not willing to be brave. That person that's hurting, that person that's sick, that coworker that's in distress, what if we were just brave and went over there and prayed for them? That, that, that hurting single mom who needs a meal delivered to their house, what if we were just brave and we took the gospel? How many miracles could we see? Amen? Now I believe with all my heart this place is called to be a miracle working place. You with me? Miracles. Signs and wonders. Acts chapter 2, church, they grew, in sign, they, grew, they grew in numbers every single day. Listen, the Lord added to their number daily. Why? Signs and wonders. The miraculous. People didn't just hear about God, they sensed God. I mean, listen to the testimony of those students. I, I went to fall retreat. I went to, this, the, I went to fire service. I went to a year service. And I felt the presence of God. I was full of anxiety, I was full of fear, and I was full of, but I met with God and he delivered me. Sweet Emma was in our first service. I went to the altar and my hands were burning, and my feet began to burn, and God began to say, these are your hands to do the miraculous, and these are your feet to go where you call me to do. God is calling us to be brave. He's calling us to it. We're out of time. Let me give you four quick things. I'm going to roll through them. You can put them all up on the screen at one time. Brave is living generously. You know, you know that we have three things given to us, right? Time, talent, and treasures. That's it. That's what God gives to us. He gives us time. You, you, you all know this. We get the same amount of time every single day as everybody else. You with me? I don't get more time than you in a day, and you don't get more time. God's given us time. He's given us talents. He's given us spiritual gifts to use for him, and he's given us treasures. He's giving us things to bring into our life, and these don't always have to be financial, that we can flow out of us. Be generous. Brave is living with integrity. You know the biggest problem with the church in our society right now is the words don't match the actions. And we think a watered-down gospel message is better, it's worse. Because they say, you say this, but you do this. It doesn't all add up. But when we begin to be people of integrity, and our actions meet our words, all of a sudden, we're going to begin to be the thermostats, and we're going to be able to change the temperature of our culture. Brave is living your life in a way that builds your testimony. 
God wants to do the miraculous through your life, but you've got to begin to be step out in it bravery. Build a testimony. The last one is this. Brave is living on mission every day in every way. How many are ready to live on God's purpose and his mission? Amen? All across this room, let's stand up together. We're all out of time.